Hello and welcome to the final edition of Chabot News for the spring semester of 2018. The date is May 16th and I'm your host Dan, aka the youngest flexor of the century. Today we'll be exposing white people for calling the cops too much, Donald Trump being Donald Trump again, the top five words of wisdom, and many more coming up on Chabot News. There's a new season approaching us, and no, it's not summer. It's that time of the year when white people call the police on black people for being black in public. Within the past month, these interactions have caught widespread attention on social media and news outlets, including CNN and the Washington Post. Can you believe that this is also happening in Oakland? The other day, some lady decided it was time to put her white privilege to, to use. She called the police because a black family was barbecuing at Lake Merritt. At Yale University, a black student fell asleep in the dorm while a white student called the police and said she wasn't supposed to be sleeping there. Also, let's not forget what happened at Starbucks in that viral video. Maybe black people should call the police when they see white people in public so they can feel for once what it's like to be racially profiled. If you thought the White House couldn't stoop any lower than a racist child being elected to office, then you are absolutely wrong. Code of ethics was clearly thrown out the window when a White House aide mocked the health of Senator John McCain by saying he's dying anyway. In response to the Senator's opposition to President Donald Trump's pick to lead the CIA, Gina Haspel. If you ask me, ethics were thrown out the window when he was caught on camera saying he grabs women by the pussy and still managed to get elected. I find it funny how the aide forgot that our president himself is old as hell. I mean, look at Trump. He's that old racist white neighbor that everyone wants to die already. Many people like Meghan McCain, John McCain's daughter, and Bernie Sanders are calling out the White House for being downright disrespectful and having no ethics. But let's be real, what do you expect from a man that steps out the White House looking like a sweet potato on toothpicks? Absolutely poor taste and tanning and ethics. Now to Chris with entertainment. Thank you, Danny Boy. And now we are here with the entertainment for this week. Okay, guess what? Not one, but two baristas were fired at the Duke University coffee shop for playing their music too loud of rapper Young Dolph. Okay, so, but the rapper made everything all right on stage um, at his concert when he gave them each 20 thousand dollars in cash while they look for the new job. Ooh, okay. Brittany Brown and Kevin Sim uh, Simons appeared on stage Friday at, with the Get Paid artist who handed the baristas their money in front of hella fans at the Rolling Loud Music Festival. The owner of the shop, Joe Van Gaal, of this coffee shop, he apologized for his handling of the situation, and I hope he did, because he was wrong. Okay, so, now it's the final countdown for the American Idols. Top three finalists, well, they've finally been revealed. Some are freaking out, and others are, well, not too impressed. Considering that Maddie Pop, Caleb Hutchinson, and Gabby Barrett had all initially been touted as country faves, okay? Their competitions all being so similar in style to one another, there's no telling who is going to win or who can predict is going to be the winner of the 2018 American Idol. That being said, I guess there's no harm in making an educated guess, right? Okay, well, my money is on Maddie Pop. Who, Maddie Pop, why? She's so multi-talented. Mm -hmm. She has consistently showed her multi-instrument uh, talent, talents. For example, back in 2015, Maddie auditioned for The Voice, mm -hmm, where she quickly learned that the road to fame is not always paved with gold. During her performance, none of the judges turned their chairs around during her blind audition. Hmm. Now, she's closer than ever to victory. And finally, don't forget to tune in to our sister station, KCMC, Channel 28, Friday night at 11 for the very important new comedy series, The Glory Hole. Ooh, I don't know about the show, but the name alone gets two snaps up. Okay, thank you very much. The Glory Hole. 
okay, was created by award-winning San Francisco independent filmmaker and Chabot student Dave O'Shea. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, thank you, Dave. The Glory Hole <laughs> is a live stream. Ooh, honey. At 29SFC.com. Always uncensored, unpredictable. Hey, you know it's unpredictable. And completely unnecessary. Story of my life. So the new episodes will premiere this July. And be sure to check out Facebook.com slash Glory Hole TV. Ooh. For more information, I got to go put some more, more lotion on my knees and now get ready for the glory hole. Thank you, Danny. Back to you, Danny boy. That's all for entertainment. Good night and have a pleasant tomorrow. <laughs> glory hole. <laughs> Did you know that a little more than 13% of our Chabot students are homeless? Making ends meet along with having food to eat can be difficult to some. Thankfully, a former student named Sky started a food pantry here on campus. Sky originally got the idea from being in her Passion and Purpose class with instructor Sean McFarlane. The food pantry is available to homeless students or students with low incomes so they can have access to healthy food. This event happens once a month, however you can sign up in advance through email at freshshabout at gmail.com or you can get free food the day they come. The food pantry is located at the Cesar Chavez Courtyard. You can also look around campus for the food pantry flyers which have all the dates for spring along with directions on how to pre-order food. Now here's Mike with the top five. Now for the final top five of this semester. We've had a lot of memorable top fives like the marijuana strengths, music recommendations, and our personal favorite, the top five ways our own Tom Lothian came in clutch. While well, popular the man asked for a sequel ano, to that previous top five. For our final edition, we decided we needed the help of our youngest college flexor in the game, our own Dan De Jesus, to drop some knowledge. Ano, for us, here are five words of wisdom from the youngest college flexor in the game. Number uh, five, the sound, the soundtrack to sex. Why you? Why he may be known for as the youngest college flexor in the game. Dan is also known around the mass comm department as a seducer of Latinas. Here at Chabo, Dan has shared with us these words of wisdom for anyone who successfully seduces a cutie here at Chabo. If you end up getting lucky here at Recommendations, the song Nights by Frank Ocean, Black Boys by SOB and RBE, or his personal favorite, I'm Sprung by T-Pain, as songs to play while you and the cutie are playing hide and seek a knock in the bedroom. Oh, the parking lot, oh, number three, the parking lot is not the spot. While it might be the spot for some, Dan has said that the parking lot is not a good spot to play hide and seek with the cutie in, the, in your car. The reason is that security kept cock blocking, but the couch in the TV studio, now that is the spot according to Dan. Number two, Bible study group, this. If you have walked around, around campus, ano, just minding your own business, you may have noticed a couple of the broke college students with their buy one, get one free sweat pants from calls trying to supposedly recruit for their Bible study group in actual their occult and also annoyance here on the campus. So in the words of the flexor, get on your bands up, get a baddie, lose your virginity, just do something with your life, you squares. Oh. Number one, your teacher is your favorite wingman. You have tried to get Dan to share his secrets on seducing Latinas, but you, he has sadly declined to share his secrets. Stingy, but he has snatched a tip. Your teacher is your best friend. When it comes to seduction, if you need to drop off a Valentine's Day gift on your own, Tom Lothian has come in clutch for Dan's Latina expedition. Now, the real question is, is where is my help with the cuties here on the campus? I need love too, bruh. Now, that is it for the top five just for this week. But the whole semester, we hope and you enjoyed these words of wisdom. Now back to you, the youngest flexor of the century. Thanks, Mike. 
Studies have shown that frozen food brands such as Banquet and Stouffer's are enjoying a recent rise in clout. As revealed by both David Palmer, an analyst for RBC Capital Markets, as well as Nielsen, sales are being estimated at $53 billion. The recent rise in popularity comes from millennials who, on average, have a little time to make a meal. Frozen foods are now being looked at as a real alternative. With the recent rise in popularity, it might be time to take a look at the frozen food aisle at your local grocery store and stock up on these meals instead of ordering takeout. The never-ending search for extraterrestrial life is about to get a big boost thanks to a new research effort from the Breakthrough Listen project. Breakthrough Listen is a scientific endeavor dreamt up by scientists who believe we should be listening for aliens rather than looking for them. The program uses radio dishes to hunt for signs of life such as communication signals drifting in space from intelligent civilizations. The ultimate goal of the Breakthrough Listen project is to scan one million stars, including those in neighboring galaxies, in the hope that a radio signal from some intelligent civilization gets caught in the net. Nobody can really say what the odds are that the project will be successful, but by listening for technological indicators of life, rather than trying to see them, the scientists hope that they can prove the existence of extraterrestrials at far off locations that can never be directly observed in a visual sense with current technology. Hopefully with this new equipment we might be able to get an answer of is there life out there? Now here's Ariel with sports. Yuki Gossen might be one of the most fun games never played in the U.S. It's basically dodgeball, but with snowballs. Yuki Gossen means snow battle and is played between two teams, each with seven players. When a player is hit with a snowball, they're eliminated from the game. Before each match, as many as 90 snowballs are made. When the teams hit the court, the fun begins. Competitions are held in Finland, Norway, Sweden, Australia, Canada, Russia, and Alaska today, with the World Championship held in Sobetsu, Hokkaido, every year. When America adopts this sport, we should call it ultimate ice fighting. Somebody get Vince McMahon on the phone. We need this in America. Have you ever heard the expression, my wife is always on my back? According to the Washington Post, it has become a sport. The North American Wife Carrying Championship this year's competition took place Saturday at a ski resort in New Remain. 44 competing couples put their relationship and their muscles to the test by running through an obstacle course that included log hurdles, sand traps, and mud. Lots and lots of mud. The man has to carry his wife through a 278-yard obstacle course, and the couple with the lowest time wins their weight in beer and $665. Elliot and Gianna Story of Westbrook, Maine, had the top time of 59.18 seconds and ran away with 11 cases of Goose Island Oktoberfest beer and the $665. The stories will also have a new story to tell. Saturday's win qualified them for the World Championship Wife Carrying Competition in Sanka Javari, Finland, next summer. And now, We'll be joined by AJ with the Chabot Gladiators baseball game, the last game of the season before they head to the North California Regional. And we are here on April 27th. We have the Galvin Rams versus the Chabot Gladiators. And the Chabot Gladiators start off with Grant Mendoza as their pitcher. And he displays his precision by rallying up a series of strikes right down the middle. But Galvin tries to take control of the game by forcing a couple base hits and getting the out. But the Gladiators aren't backing down at all with the strike right down the middle making Galvin really reach for it in the miss and the out. And the Chabot Gladiators play mind games with the pitcher of the Galvin by stealing bases. The tensors are rising when the game is about to come to a close. The gliders do have all bases loaded. And we have the pitch. And we have a hit. It is high. It's right down right field. And it's over his head. And the gliders have done it. And we'll hear from number 23 who made this all happen. Uh, my name is Dominic Chintoli and I'm 23. 
and how many years have you been playing baseball at Chabot and overall? This is my first year. Threw very slow, so I figured I'd hit one to the right side. Extra innings, we powered through everyone as a team. It was very good. We all came through together. It was a great one. Thought we had a good season, but it's, it's been ups and downs, but I think we had a good group of guys here. I was confident the whole time. Ooh, he was confident the whole time. And any shout outs? Uh, shout out Hunter Harris, Alex Bray, Doobie Dubois, my man Chris Tona, and my man Timmy. Cool, cool. Um, what else are you going to do today? Like, what's the plans? Oh, the plan is we got some nice food uh, made for us, and I'm going to enjoy the rest of the food and day with my uh, teammates. Thanks, AJ. Back to you, Dan. 13 truck drivers teamed up with the Michigan State Police for a creative maneuver that helped save a man threatening to jump off a highway overpass. The police closed the I-696 freeway in the Detroit area in both directions at 1 a.m. on Tuesday and had 13 volunteer truckers and 18 wheelers line up under the overpass after a despondent man told the police he was going to jump. The trucks formed a wall between the overpass and the ground to shorten the fall if the man jumped. The man was eventually convinced to step away from the edge and take him to a hospital. And then the state police even went to every rig and shook each driver's hand after the man had been taken to safety. Remember, suicide is never the answer. That wraps it up for the semester. We hope you enjoyed our wonderful production this year. Shout out to all the students and staff in the Mass Communication Department here at Chabot for making this production possible. Watch us anytime online at youtube.com slash Chabot TV. Stay tuned to KCTA's channel 27 for more Chabot TV.